Hello and welcome to Camera Central Podcast. Today I have Pav S V on. Introduce yourself. S Z S Z. I have to stop you there. Pav S Z. I don't know why everyone is doing that. What did I say? S V S. I don't know why people keep saying that. Okay. So this is the theory. It's S S Pav S Z. Sorry, Pav S Z. That's the one. I think it's because like I automatically be like, oh, it must be V because video. But then what would the S stand for? Cause it's it's not like... uh, my initial. It's my initials. That's why, because my yeah. surname is Schwabred, and nobody can pronounce it. <laughs> so I just made it easier. Well, my, There's um... a lot of paths, but it's only one path as Z. Where, where are you from originally, then? Poland. I'm from Poland. Warsaw. Ah, uh, Jean Double, Jean Double. My uh, <laughs> stepfather was um, was Polish. Is Polish. Well, it's probably the only word I know. But th- there you go. So introduce yourself. What do you do? Hey, what do I do? What what don't what 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 do I not do? <laughs> That's. Uh, I do everything. Uh, I'm a photographer and filmmaker. I've been doing it commercially for 25 years. The Camera Central podcast is available both on Spotify and YouTube. So make sure you like, follow and subscribe if you want to see more. Let's get back into it, shall we? And just before COVID, I thought for strange reason, I thought I'll go in front of the camera and start talking about things I'm passionate about. So I've started a YouTube channel as a test, as a kind of test, as a, as a, a hobby really for a month or so i thought i'll just do a few videos and see how i feel and uh, four and a half years later i'm still doing it every single week yeah. uh, the reason i started it was because i was doing a lot of networking and i was terrible at doing that 60 seconds you do networking you, know, you have to get up and tell people who you are and i thought yeah. if i do videos and talk about something i'll learn to to talk with a structure and, and be more confident yeah but i don't do any on networking but i'm doing youtube full time now <laughs> i mean well that, that's that's the ideal place to be i mean i'm technically doing youtube full time right now but it's more just i kind of jumped on the back of a company in order to do it but awesome so you started in 2020 you as a creator as a creative kind of what has being a youtuber done for you or has been starting doing this other side of content creation than you're usually used to i guess done for you as 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 an individual i guess yeah it gives more freedom i've got nobody telling me what to do (laughs) that's apart from algorithm (laughs) apart from algorithm yeah but it's i think creatively i've always done portraits and food photography music videos but it's kind of you go to clients shoots especially corporate stuff you do what they need you don't particularly shoot what you want and the style you want so i thought yeah i think sorry to interrupt you i think that's that's, okay. that's something that i think i found quite freeing about doing this as well because I, I ran a video production company still run it on the on the side um outside of here what i found really lovely about doing this and doing the content creation for camera center and a little bit for myself I'm not gonna lie it's it's been free and it's been giving me the ability to really open up creatively and you you're able to do the shoots that you want to do at the end of the day so all those weird ideas that you've had you are you're able to execute a little bit more i guess a little bit yeah yeah a little i bit. think in reality though the time constraints and trying to produce content every week you don't you can't go crazy really i do i don't need samples for lens reviews i need x amount of samples so the portrait if portrait comes into equation it's not something wacky but it's just the way i want it without without any restrictions yeah. so i can do it i can do it my way it's nothing special nothing nothing elaborate but it's just my way my the way. way i like it my way <laughs> or the highway that's, that's the way that, that's, that's the way but no I I, I I i do agree with you so is this something that you've always kind of wanted to do getting into doing youtube or is it literally no i think as a lot of people did when in covid end is they just decide to change their entire path or when covid was going on they just entire, entirely changed their entire path was it one of those things that you, you... no not at all because I still struggle with going from the camera. It's yeah. not something I'm naturally good at. I think I've done it so many times now that I got used to it, and I've got a like a like a procedure I have to follow to to make it work. Yeah. But I've started before COVID. It wasn't COVID wasn't the decisive decisive force for me to do it. Mm. It just I think the main reason for me to continue and keep doing it is the toys. I get so many stuff, so many cameras and lenses to try, and when you just uh, no matter how much money you make and how much lucky you are, you you are very lucky because you work for a camera show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, but, no, but you do, we don't have access to it. It's like, I, yeah. I love the stuff, 
but how can I try this and this and this and this? Yeah. And now I can. You know, not all of, not everything, but a lot of brands I'm interested in, all the products I can try. So yeah, that's yeah, that's probably yeah. I mean, like it's a toys. Getting into being a photographer and being a videographer is like you don't want to admit it's about the toys. Like buying a new pred like thing or you know getting into a new system, you're like, oh, I really yeah. this is what I I, I need. It's it's never, never really about want, is it? It's kind of like. Hey, I want to try out some stuff, and I think I I, I need that lens and that I, red camera. I, I need that lens. Can I can I do the stuff without it? Oh, maybe, but it does give me something else I can do. Um, yeah, it's, but in reality though is I have actually said that to someone yesterday on the comments on YouTube. Uh, it's the lens is like the toys is great when you got the mm. best camera and the best lens. It makes life a little bit easier, but in reality. You, you should be able to make it work with whatever you got. Yes. You know, uh, I have uh, I have started my, my journey. I had a professional camera always, yeah. but uh, a big chunk of my career as a photographer, I had the cheapest two lenses I could buy. I had the cheapest 50 mil and I had the cheapest second hand yeah. wide angle and I made it work. Yeah. That's 100%. all I had. In you fact, just adjust and you make it work. In fact, and still till today, I think, one of my favourite lenses I've ever bought, and I think it's one of the ones that everyone buys and it kind of changes stuff. I was on Canon at the time. It was the Nifty 50 Plastic Fantastic. That Sony lens... One. Yeah, huh? Which, which brand? Uh, Canon. The Plastic oh, Fantastic. Oh, Canon one, yeah, like, yeah. You could get yeah, this. Yeah. You could get this thing £100 second hand, and yeah. it was plastic through and through. Not much the sharpest thing, but I think what I think a lot of brands are missing at the moment is that bottom of the range just 50 mil just get people yeah. in like poor of the moment by interested in aperture because these 50 mils were the kit lenses for old film cameras pretty much across the board for a really long time until you know the basic zoom came in and i and i honestly think the basic zoom needs to just be obliterated because it's annoying i, I hate it. i don't know about you and just replace it with just a nice plastic fantastic on the front of it and and you know it's just great to just get shots it's just people like zooms i guess but saying that i am yeah. shooting with zooms pretty much I, at the moment i do i do agree that we there should be more very budget friendly lenses like yeah. a, like a stuff the stuff you bought your expensive stuff you bought you spend your money on that expensive zoom or prime or whatever but then you want something else yeah and you don't want to spend all the money, but something would challenge you for yeah. starters, and then something which will still work. Okay. Yeah, I, exactly. There's, I think... there's, there's one lens came out recently like this, which I absolutely love. It's a Viltrox 20 millimeter f 2.8. Uh... I have reviewed that lens recently, and that's like 150 pounds lens, and it's absolutely amazing. Is it's it? not perfect. It's plastic. Mm. <laughs> it's, I'd, I'd it's light and it's super yeah. cheap, but it's so much fun to shoot with. I'd, I'd love to get some Viltroxes on the channel. It's just that unfortunately it's not a brand that we actually, I think we've had one or two here, but not too many. Yeah. But Viltrox are an interesting brand at the moment because they are doing um, great. They're now. doing autofocus as well with those cheaper lenses, isn't yep. it? Yeah. Don't. Really got to try it out at some point. I'd love to. But I think that's where, like, originally Samyang kind of were probably some of the first people to actually introduce these budget friendly manual focus. Yep primes and stuff like that and then you know they've now gone into the autofocus market but it's really interesting and i think one of the in most interesting brands that have kind of again this is i say come into the market in like a budget pride like high quality primes is sigma but it's, it's been a long time sigma have been like kind of on top a budget yeah but like yeah <laughs> no um but i think sigma have carved themselves out a really good part of the market where yeah. their primes are incredible um they are yeah they yeah, they they cheaper than the the big boys yeah but they're not budget friendly yeah. they, they are you're paying for quality and you get quality yeah yeah you get quality similar. and in some cases some like the lens that i think i feel like uh i use the most and is my one of my most invaluable tools is probably 35 and that, what about you this is kind of a conversation more about you than me so like what is the lenses that you often pick when it comes to uh, shooting i don't know if i can say that you don't know uh, well i'm obviously a lumix shooter yes <laughs> the the s line is that is probably the s line primes is the is the core of everything i do pretty yeah. much uh the new 100 millimeter macro came out this week as well yes. that's a good lens I, I, I'd that's love kind to of try out actually the new 100 mil. i would say that this is the, the the stuff i go to first just because it's great the quality is all amazing everything is working as it should now with the autofocus as well but it's it's still underdog mm. no matter how you look at it 
Sony, Canon, obviously Canon first. Canon, Nikon, Sony. You know, these are these are the brands which which kind of the mainstream. And Lumix, although they're amazing, they're still that underdog. Yeah. And I love that. For that uh, alone, I like it because it's less less used by people. I do feel like that's a um, a general way of thinking when it comes to people who generally shoot Panasonic is that they're the under they're the, always the underdogs. Um, yeah. Yeah, but the, the, no, there's nothing missing from the S S five S five two S five two S five two and S five two X. They gone. There's nothing missing with yeah. these cameras. Which you is know, and, finally, um, I can say I agree with you because actually having good autofocus in a Panasonic camera for a long time was like not a thing really. Um, yeah. And I don't. You, you can probably argue that case. I'd like from from trying them out. I'd, I'd like the autofocus has not been necessarily fantastic, but trying out the G9 Mark II, I was yeah, very camera. impressed with that. Yeah. And I I, I did, did do a video on the S5 II, but I needed to actually I think shoot a proper video with it. Maybe do like a music video or something like that, and um, really yeah. try it out. Yeah, the the crop, the six K, the four K, four K. Sixty P crop is is a bit frustrating sometimes, uh, but but mm -hmm. for the price. Well, for the price, I mean, for the price, it's, it's not really much that really beats it at the moment. And yeah, like like because I, I've recently, well, I I have an I had an FX six and I've just changed to an FX three. But I feel like I'm missing out on trying out the the, the Black Magics, the um, Panasonics of the world. I, I I genuinely do. It's just one of those things where like the jump kind of scares me. But well, you, see, maybe, you don't maybe, jump. Maybe you just you just use them at the same time. That's what I do. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't decide that I'm actually leaving that brand. So I'm yeah. still. I'm doing it. I'm filming myself now with Sony now. Yeah. Because I wanted to have this in my hand. Yeah. But uh, but I do have Sony and I do have a Fuji and I do have a Nikon as well. Yeah. So it's it's the kind of uh, yeah. If I think yeah. oh today Sony Sony <laughs> is better for that job, I'll go with Sony. Yeah, yeah. But the first first choice is, first is choice that is in this. my hand. Yeah. And I'm actually trying out a new camera at the moment, which uh, I'd love to get your opinion on uh, the Nikon ZF. What, yes, what I, do I really want to put my it? hands on it. I, really I've been to. I've been trying to get my hands on it, but I can't at the uh, moment. It's uh, yeah, hard. it looks it looks fantastic. I I've literally been trying to get my hand on that camera since they released it, but like due to just everyone wanting to have a go on it, it has been impossible. Like we've been. Uh, you, you you do yeah. stock it though. That's huh? yours. You what? do stock it. Yeah, yeah we do you, we do can, stock it, yeah. but we can't. Uh, when it comes to the stock, we can't necessarily get it out and start using it because yeah, yeah. when it comes to Nikon shooters in particular and other shooters, they really like to make sure the shutter count is absolute yeah. zero. It look it looks fantastic. I love the look of it. Is the the, the yeah. vintage do retro you think, look? Do you think it's important for a camera because it's coming out with more like brands are trying it where they have a sort of like an older aesthetic these days, um, and Nikon seem to always kind of release one that looks looks the part but they never really embrace that design into their full lineup what do yeah. you think do you think having that aesthetic is is nice and why do you think it's so popular yeah i think there's a two two ways to look at it firstly is that people who do remember the vintage cameras who when they were in vintage yeah. and they got that emotional connection with that with something which looks like that and feels like that but i think and second one, more important one. I said that before in my videos very often. Uh, and I, did, I, did, I do tell that people when they ask me which camera should I buy, you should buy the camera which looks nice to you. Because they all they all do a great yeah. job now. They, all the current models now of any brand, they will do the job very well. Yeah. And I think very often you look at the camera and you think, oh, that looks pretty. I'll have that one. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Nikon, with that ZF, they're actually doing that because it looks cool. It looks cool. It's, and the fact yeah. that it looks so much like an FM2 is... Yeah up it's beautiful and it's a camera that i keep leaning towards when i'm just wanting to go out and take photos and just be in that moment so, so have you have you have you tried it have you shoveled it? I, I tell you what i'll be right back okay you've got it hello so yes hello. i have been lucky enough to finally get sent one and look at it it's yeah, just it's cool. So cool. It's just so pretty. I would have loved to try what, the silver one. What not, lens have you got on that? Have uh, you got a vintage lens? I've got a 28mm f2.8. Oh. Yeah, but that lens as well is looking like old Nikons. Yeah, no, they released a limited edition, uh, two of them, I believe. So the 28 and the 40. I'd like it. It's such a pleasure to shoot. <laughs> 
And well, I'd love, I'd love to try. I have emailed Nikon like a million times. I have talked to them as well. Yeah. Uh, at your at your photography show. Yeah. Uh, last year, and I can't, I can't get a connection. So. Well, are you I gonna, just probably have to buy it. You're going to be at <laughs> SWPP this year. Yeah. I will see sure. you there. So let's we'll have a coffee or something. Um, yeah, definitely. I don't know if I've still got it up until then, but if I do, I'll bring it along. I, I think I'll, I'll have to have it earlier than that. <laughs> Sooner. It's, it's one of those. <laughs> this is this is the thing about camera tech, um, and you know, you being a reviewer, I think you can probably understand. It's as soon as something new comes out, it's just like I want to have my hands on it so bad. But sometimes, you know, I mean, as I said before, it's not practical to buy it all. I mean, this is no. just it's expensive stuff. Yeah. So I need a loan from somewhere. I think now the camera's been. Uh, out long enough i'll try probably uh, rent it from somewhere you know that's probably yeah. the most realistic you know option if nikon if nikon doesn't want to talk to me i'll, I'll just rent it yeah no no from it's, someone one those, else. it's one of those it's one of those, it's one of those <laughs> things it's it's, it's 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 a pain to do but once you actually have the ability it's 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 good but um i really hope you actually manage to get your hands on it because it is it's it's a lot of fun so this is the start of 2024 all right what was your favorite tech that you reviewed last year well, there is one. It wasn't, I think it was late summer I've done it, and I've talked about it towards the end again. It's a PD movie, Live Earth 3 Smart. Okay. It's a, you are a filmmaker. Yeah. You will understand my pain, <laughs> the manual focusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can do it, but when people move uh, gimbal stuff, you know, I am a one man band, so I have to do, fil do filming and focusing by myself. Yeah. It's very hard, and if sometimes you just the numbers of takes I have to take to just to get another one shot is not practical. So I chose to go autofocus route. But then cinema lenses, especially now it's a lot of budget friendly ones, mm. are quite cool, and they look they the they look they produced is different as well than yeah. photo lenses. And a PD movie they came up with it. The DJI as well. They they doing this, but it's more expensive. PD movies got this uh, lidar device which attaches to a lens and detects the distance between the lens and the subject in front and auto focuses with manual lenses yeah and it works it's, it's and i love this it's 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 crazy they started because i think it's, well, dji introduced that first didn't they? yeah they did this first but only yeah. with the dji products and now they, they actually can buy it too which works with all of them which is great lens. and i think it opens up and because if you have a look at it through just it's cool that tech exists right but then uh, how much is it 500 pounds roughly 500 the pounds. whole kit yeah yeah but like if you're a budding cinematographer for example and you don't want to spend too much money i know 500 quid is a lot of money okay uh but this is my pitch all right so get one of those which is great and then what you've got the ability to do is buy a bunch of old primes and then suddenly you've got this really impressive like cinema level kind of like quality out of it because like Something with auto focusing, with auto focusing on yeah. old pr zoom lenses. I mean, not zoom yeah. lenses, old primes. Prime. Absolutely stunning because, I, like, I was lucky enough this year to last year, sorry, to try out the dream lens. You've heard of the dream lens? No. Uh, the Canon. Really? Is, so it's a Canon fifty millimeter zero nine five dream lens. Um, yes, I have heard about it. Yeah. Uh, and I would love to try out the auto focusing on that. Um, problem. Problem with that is uh, I do have a, I do have a Helios. I'm doing actually a video right now. My another video about Helios 442. Yeah. The old lenses, like vintage lenses, the focus throw is quite long. That means the focus ring turn yeah. it's like 340 degrees. So you have to put a rubber band, which they supply with the kit on it. Yeah. But then the, the, the clamp, which holds the band, is too wide. Yeah. So the lens won't have a full turn. <laughs> so yeah. it has to be a right right lens for it. Some lenses won't work. And uh, this is vintage where... Lens. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is where... 3D printing, I think, has actually come into its own as well. Because he you is, can make it. You can make gears a, for the, it, yeah. the, the gears perfect. Um, of course, you know Sam Higgins from Format High Tech, right? Yeah. Um, he's yeah. actually printed. I, I think it's a Helios, like, or he got his friend to print a Helios housing. So, like, the entire okay. lens is created out from 3D printing, which is another realm of craziness in and of itself. Because they're expensive. There's a company in Ukraine still still going. Uh, uh, it's iron, iron something they yeah, call. Yeah, iron glass. Iron glass. That's it. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's expensive to get to to to, uh, to buy a forty pound vintage lens and have it housed in a cinema cinema housing. If you could actually have a, if someone came up with this, three D printed, just the case, you put the lens inside of it. I that, I mean that would. And then adapter. Yeah. So you just basically perfect. attaches, so you can focus and and you know, manually with the gears. I think a big something part, simple. 
I think a big part of it, though, is probably that focus through kind of reducing it as much as, like, and keeping it within cinema kind of, like, level yeah. of focus through. Cause... Well, if you had a ring all the way around it, yeah. it would be fine. It's yeah. just now, because you don't have a gear, so you have to put that supplied rubber band, yeah. which has to be attached somehow, and then you get that, the, the, the place you can't turn the lens because you got the end of the the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The small, small rig, do they do, a, they do, like, a rubber bands with no, no, cl- no clamp on it. But they don't do it. They don't do it small enough for a, for the vintage old lenses. No, I don't think so. I, I've got, I think I've got, I think I've got a full kit, and maybe I don't have a smallest one <laughs> because I can't do it. <laughs> but th- th- that kind of falls into place of kind of another thing. I think it would be interesting to talk about is when it comes to being a photographer, and I think this is mainly towards videographer bodging together bits of kit in order to create something that's not supposed to be used that way like uh, have you got any stories of you doing something like that that you've ever found interesting like modifying something to work like modifying something to work so no i'm terrible with diy that will end up with disaster that's 100 it's not necessarily (laughs) diy because i feel like most of us have a box full of just like random assorted camera cage bits right yeah and i always keep everything in this box of just like camera cage bits and then i know one day this random cog from a grip that i've just taken apart is going to be really really useful i've got that box as well you've got that box as well and yeah do you know what the bit. probably more than one box do you know what it it has kind of ish to a certain extent and to be fair one thing i can I'll, I'll be right back again oh <laughs> Oh, wow. What's that? So, do you remember the tripod? The tripod I showed you at um, Wales and West. Yes, I've got it. Yes, you've got it. I have now made it bigger through assorted stuff that I found out. Okay. So, um, rather than just being a simple thing now... If you have a look at the Osmo video I did recently, link up here. I'm probably not actually being picked up on my mic. But now, look at it. Oh, so it's much I, longer. I, it's what really, did you use? Is that monopod or something? Uh, no, so this is actually... Oh, central this, column. This is actually a column that Vanguard sell with it. Yeah. Um, no, sell with it. Sell it separately. So you can have two cameras. When you're reviewing cameras, you can have two cameras side yeah. by side. Um, and I've linked it together, used a video head to kind of <laughs> help me counterbalance this side. Nice. And it's worked really well for some shots that I've done more recently. Um, and yeah, I just love playing around with, with it. I don't know, do you, do you do that? Is it just me or do you just like every now and then you just play with your box of Legos essentially? Yeah, I think it's sometimes for me it's uh, it's not planned. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking for something specific, and then I have to improvise with something else. Like you screw something to something, you know, yeah. the cheese plates or or some old handles. You know, uh, yeah, I've done that. Uh, I've got I've got a massive box of screws as well, like from small rig and tripods and yeah, I just s- in case. Have you got any questions at all? Yeah, what's your favorite piece of piece of kit from last year? My favorite piece of kit from last year, I would say the ZV ZF, but like I got it this year, so I, I don't know if I can really count it. Doesn't it doesn't count. Doesn't count, no. doesn't count. Um, favorite piece of gear, I will say I really enjoyed the A9, A9 Mark III. Yeah. Really pretty, pretty camera, mainly because they, they sent me out to Turkey, which is always lovely when they do stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I sound like such a thing. Oh, I, the one that I've got to say, and I think it probably gave me the most joy on the actual day, uh, was the Sigma 200 to 500 f2.8. And the other side of that is because it's my most viral piece of content that's actually gone um, on Instagram, that is. It's like 1.3 million views. Sigma, there's a, there's, hang on, there's a Sigma 200 to 500 millimeter. f2.8. f2.8. Have I not seen that before? <laughs> Have you not seen it before? Oh, the big, the big, the big one, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, yeah the big Canon. 
Yeah. I have seen it. I have never used it. Yeah. Um, yeah. How how did you find it then? Because it's, I presume it's very heavy. <laughs> you can only use it on a tripod. Um, the lens itself is beyond heavy. It's like 17 kilograms uh, <laughs> by itself. Uh, it needs a battery, a separate battery for the autofocus motors. Wow. Um, and, and yeah, no, she's she's big and she's beautiful. And um, 15,000 pounds as well. Fifteen thousand pounds. They don't make it anymore, but they keep it in the in the, in the Sigma warehouse, and uh, people like renting it out again every now and then because like it's. Uh, just... I might I might try it one day. Yeah, no, I don't know, I don't know if I want to rip out the camera mount from any of my cameras. Yeah, give it a go. I tell you what, if you're ever in Cardiff, I'll, I'll message Sam and uh, see if we can get it down again. I love Sam. Well, Sam. I'm I'm working I'm working with Sigma from for from the beginning for four years now, yeah. so I'm sure oh, they'll nice. be kind enough to. They have, to, you know, to lend it to me if I if if I wanted to try lens this heavy. Oh, 100 um, percent. And that's, it's scary. that's something something you you like. They did make sure that Sam was like next to me when it was using it because um, he actually <laughs> helped me shoot that video. Um, but like, it's 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 a beautiful thing. And I will say, that's what I like about Sigma as well is that they're really supportive of creatives in general. If you want to borrow yeah. stuff and everything like that, it's they really are. great. And the thing that I like about them the most, and it's something that I haven't tried out myself, but if I if you ever want to switch to a different oh, thing, mount. they will yeah. they will switch out the the mount yeah. for you, so you don't have to buy an entirely new lens. Yeah, um, actually, so I, I knew about it, but I forgot about it because I do have an old Nikon mount, fifty mil, okay. the old HSM one, and I don't I do have a Nikon, but I don't really use it much. Yeah. Uh, I might change it to something else, like yeah. Sony. Yeah, no, give, give, give it a go. I don't, I don't know if they'll do the HSM one, because that's, that's not an art, is I it? Think you can, is it? Yeah, I think you can change the amounts on those, on all of them. Really? Yeah. I'd be interested. They're still, they're st you can still buy them in the, in the L mount and, uh, and Sony E, Yeah. and then Nikon Canon as well, so I think they can swap around. Oh, fair enough. I'm going to ask, because that's interesting. Yeah. That is a good thing because if you do have old lenses and you don't want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you do like if you like them, you know, why not just use them on your camera? Ah, uh, fair enough. Two hundred to five hundred was my favorite thing I kind of looked at last year, but that's still cheating because it's an old lens. My favorite new thing that came out last year was the seventy to two hundred f four macro from Sony. Um, so much Very so f f four macro. F I haven't tried one yet. F four macro. Um, so 70 to 200 f4 macro and it's kind of become one of the main lenses i use for b-roll of products in conjunction with this out yeah um in conjunction with this um it's it's killer like genuinely killer is this uh, the mark ii yeah uh, the mark f4 II. lens yeah mark II. yeah um i have tried the first one i have reviewed that but i haven't tried the second yeah. one yet because usually I am, price. usually I don't know about you. I really like low aperture lenses, and I am a sucker for that. Um, but it Who was doesn't? actually really good. I mean, exactly, exactly. If you're not shooting at f one point two, what you're shooting at? But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you got? I tell you what. Have you got a hot take? A hot take on collaborate. Like, uh, like so, I. I don't like using UVs because they just take away from the sharpness of the lens. You know, something that, that could be almost controversial within the photography community that you feel. I don't know. I, do use, I use cheap ND filters. You use, you use cheap ND filters? That's interesting. I don't know why. I've got, I've got, I've got some expensive ones, but then just too, too, too much hassle. I've got like a KNF cheap one, and I use that on yeah, 90%. It, it? Yeah. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, um, there, there might be not perfect, maybe there's some little color cast or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's all adjustable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, well, I don't think about it. <laughs> but I don't think, think I've got, a, I've got like, a, like a hack, you know, for something. I don't think uh, I'll use anything specific, you know, to, to, to say that. Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But I do, I do like cheap lens. I do like underdog. I always have. Yeah. Uh, for everything, really, in life, not just the cameras, but I, I like yeah. the... The less popular one and make it work. Yeah. That's what I like. You know, with the cameras, you don't really have much choice. Yeah. Because because that's it. You don't have a cheap cameras really. Yeah. But the lenses, you can't play with it on all on all brands apart from Canon because they don't allow anyone in those. Mm. Probably probably do. Well, like the manual lenses you can buy for RF now. The thing I would argue with that is um, yes, you may not have many cheap options, but I think when it comes to 
imaging technology, what's become really interesting is actually the used market. And through watching Micro Four Nerds, um, a lovely person mm -hmm. met also, I met both of you at uh, Wales and Most, yeah, of course. Emily, yeah. Uh, Emily. What is fascinating is the actual used market, especially when it comes to not necessarily just Micro Four Thirds, but also full frame cameras as well. If you are a photography person, you can pick up a Canon 5D for ridiculous amounts of money these days. Yeah. Like, I mean, like ridiculously small amount for what it is considered anyway. And in that retrospect, is there any used cameras that you would actually think would actually be a great starting off point for people? Yeah, this, this comes, I come back to what I said before. You know, if, you, if that's all you can afford, you make it work. Yeah. And uh, you can't get a, like a seven three, even a seven two. I go that far. I but a seven three is a good Sony for Sony. Yeah. It's a good, very good camera, which was like amazing when it came out. Now it seems quite old, and you can get one quite cheap second hand. Yeah. I mean, maybe not dirt cheap, but cheaper than cheap, anything cheap. current. But but, even but nothing wrong with that. But going even older, like you know, even a seven original a seven. I have seen people using the original a yeah. seven still. Well, like and, original, and still works. original A7, get yourself a Helios, sorted. Yeah. I mean, you can take yeah. some incredible photos with that. Yeah. I do remember the uh, the first A7R had a particularly loud shutter because my friend had one and it sounded like Thor's hammer. Um, <laughs> like genuinely, that one <laughs> I, in particular, that one in particular is like pretty loud. Yeah. What What was your first Sony camera? What was my first? Uh, my first Sony camera was um, a Sony A7S II. Um, I was a Canon, a Canon before. Yeah, it, it was just a killer camera for for the money in which it was. And then I jumped to an A7 III. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think most people did. And I honestly yeah. think Sony probably paid Sigma a lot of money to create the a MC11 because I feel like that was a. Um, a big yeah, changer, kind of uses, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a, a yeah. big thing for people to change over at that point. What point did you end up switching to Panasonic then? About two years, maybe more than two years now. I think when S5 came out, because I have reviewed that S5 originally. Uh, originally, I have re I have done like three videos, I think two videos yeah. for sure, like over a period of maybe four months since it came out. Yeah, and then I had to have it. He just just not only that I had really good views and I liked the camera. It was a kind of the something which was right for me. Yeah. Again, underdog, you know, it's the Sony was great. I had i7 III at the time, and the S5 Lumix was the was that that something some the auto focusing wasn't there, not quite right. But we all Lumix users say, Yeah, it was fine if you use it right, it wasn't. Uh, but then you had the whole form factor, the way the camera looked, the 6K open gate, mm. you know, you always had that in there. So it's a lot of little things, the color as well, yeah. which pushed me that way a bit more. Yeah, well, fair enough. Yeah, I still, I still, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the same with the guitars. I can't part with any guitars. I've got my first guitar still. I've got yeah. all of guitars because I, I just, I just get emotion attached to it, so oh I keep it. God. That's something that I wish I did personally is keep every camera that like I've ever used. And one day, like when I'm rich and famous, which is probably one day. I, I don't think so. Well, it might happen. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> I would love to pick up all of the cameras I've ever owned. So are you saying that you've got every single one that you've ever had? No, I've got, I've got, I'm saying I've got all my guitars that I ever owned. I never sold ah, a guitar. With the cameras, because I get emotional attached to things, but with the cameras, not practical because I'm never, never going to use them, but I've got, I've got four different brands right now yeah, yeah. because of that. I don't want to, uh, yeah, I do love the Panasonic and I do use it. It's my first choice, but I don't want to limit myself. Yeah. Especially, especially that I review lenses, so I want to be able to review yeah. the lens on the Sony as well. And but I do, I said there's a, there's a different days and different purpose, you know, where I use different brand. I love Fuji. I bought an XS20 yeah. uh, recently, uh, last summer. And I, and I like the form factor, kind of small and cute camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and if I go traveling, I prefer to take that with me than the Lumix. But I take a Lumix anyway, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> just, just in just, case. Just, just in case. But, just in case. Uh, I've got that option, you know, I don't have to be, I'm lucky enough to, to be able to afford these cameras, you know, yeah. but, but, but I, I can't, I can't say, oh, I'm going to sell all my Sony stuff yeah. now and Fuji and Nikon because I am Lumix shooter now. I am, but what if tomorrow I want to play with Sony for, for now? Oh well, yeah, no, exactly. And I think that's kind of, because, you know, I'm, I am very early in my well, we are very early in our path when it comes to the channel and what we're doing with it. Um, but me personally, I think that 
I, from what you were saying, that I think I have got a greater appreciation for other brands because I think there is a big thing when it comes to I'm going to stick with this brand because this is what I know. But like the other side of it is the other brands actually have a lot of their own benefits and you know. Yeah, but it's usually small things. I don't think it's uh, anything major yeah, between these... current cameras in the, in the same class. You, yeah, you, yeah. you get the same the same thing. Uh, someone asked me, "Oh, how can you shoot with different brands?" You know, I, I, sometimes I've got a Sony and, and Lumix on me when I'm shooting. You know, like at yeah. an event, for example. Yeah. But but it's like I said to people, it's like driving a car. You know, you, you can drive the car. You go to the other car. Okay, the buttons might be slightly different, but that's the same job. Yeah. yeah. No, and in the same way, it's the same with all the cameras. I agree. Yeah, you know, there's. I think as camera tech has kind of got advanced, it's got kind of like there are benefits, but it's to other brands, but it's small in comparison. Like yeah, but the, the differences are will be something very niche and something specialist, you know. Yeah. Uh, autofocus obviously performance but that's it's so minor differences now between the current cameras yeah. that it's picking you know or that doesn't yeah. work as well as that one but like the big things i can think of uh like lumix for example and olympus OM system now yeah. they go uh, that live view composite which sony hasn't when you can actually only record the changes in light so if you're going to get star trails or or night scene with the cars or anything night, night photography, yeah. uh, long exposures only records the changes in light. So you can actually paint with light and see what's happening in the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of very, very, you're not going to use it every day. It's very specific, but it's different than Sony or Canon do. Yeah. They don't have that. Yeah. So that, that, that but it's like if you do, if you do pictures or video, like yeah. a standard stuff, portrait, you know, products or events or anything like that, all these cameras do the same thing. And then you can find in some brands very specific niche features, yeah. which you might or use or yeah. never even go there. Yeah, like exactly. Um, and I think for niche features, I think Sony have um, have one of these things where they're introducing a lot of niche features. And this is me not saying that Sony is the best. I'm not. This is me saying the auto reframing in the Sony's. I find that just like a weird add-on i can i get it i do get it what, what is auto reframing in okay so with the zve one um and uh, the a7c2 they have this mode called um auto reframing and then a few of the other vloggy kind of cameras that they have so you can okay. put your camera down on a tripod and it will automatically reframe um a 4k image track and track you so it's like what you oh, have so with an Osmo. So there's a small room so if you move around you will move with you yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. but yeah. it's 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 a gimmicky thing and i think camera manufacturers these days are trying to find more and more kind of like gimmicks different kind of ways of doing things yeah. and eventually they're going to find something that sticks i mean that might i i thought it was cool when i first tested it out have i used it since having like an a7c2 no no i haven't it's nice. It's cool, but like, it's one of. Yeah, those... As I said, it's something you might use once and you never go there again. No, no, no. Exactly. It's, it's, they're adding these things. I think they're adding these niche things just to to, to make it look better on the advert. Yeah. You know, on a on a on a spec sheet when someone is looking for a new camera. Oh, that's got this and this and this. Exactly. But does it make a difference to in the real world? And uh, I think maybe. The, I, I think one of the other th things that I think might be something that gets introduced more into cameras is generative ai i don't know i i'm like in what sense how, how do you how do you see that so um have you seen uh, the stuff about the insta 360 ace pro yeah all right so um I've just, when i upload the upload the footage into cloud and yeah. then you can you can modify with ai yeah makes it look yeah, like magic. an anime essentially magic yeah I mean, it's a cool implementation the trouble is when i see stuff like that is like it's not necessarily photography or video or stuff like that. I think, sorry. I think there are ways in which you could use it creatively, but it takes away from it. And I don't know if it is ever something I would see in like a FX series or like a yeah, full frame camera. Yeah. I think it yeah. works well for action cameras, and I can see it being used for people that have that very particular kind of like part of the industry. Yeah, it is. It is gimmicky. It's a, it's a toy. Mm. It makes it makes the toy more more toy. <laughs> it makes the toy. It, it, it exactly makes the toy more toy. So I don't know if it's going to be something that's going to be used a little bit more across the board, 
but it, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think AI, like <laughs> where it affects yeah, the I, image I, I, more, do you think it's going to be used? I, I'll talk about different AI. I don't know. I haven't tried the a, a, A9 III yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope to try it some sometime soon. Hopefully this year. Yeah. yeah. But uh, obviously that camera is like like seriously advanced with everything. I know Sony and I think most of the brands now they they play with AI. They say it's AI, but I have never really noticed anything like oh it's doing something different apart from the Lumix G9 II, because yeah. that to me you no know, they say oh it's AI learning system. Yeah. But then when you try like with the Sony cameras I have used even the Lumix if you try to do pictures or video of animals. It works, you know, most of the time. Then you got the animals which are weird looking. It doesn't, yeah. you know. I mean, with Sony cameras with A7 IV, it doesn't like horses. Mine doesn't. <laughs> it just it cats, dogs, fine, birds, fine. But um, if you put a horse, and it struggles. So what G92 did, what well, they say is AI learning. I have I have photographed zebras and I photographed the rhino with it, which are unusual looking animals. Rhino was yeah. covered in mud. You couldn't tell it was a, it was yeah. gray on gray animal, but you can tell when you're looking through viewfinder, it draws the box around the animal and then starts moving. It kind of starts shifting and it tries to figure out what is the front, what is the back. Then you figure out this is the head, and they will find the eye. That's actually and you can really tell it's the second time you go on the same animal, like one minute later, instantly goes to the eye. Okay, it, it learns. So it's AI, but yeah. it doesn't create anything weird. It learns at looking at what's happening in front of it to determine if it's a animal or a human and where the eye should be. And he finds it there. What, what, it's quite cool. It, it, that is quite cool. From the Sony side of the like the learning, the AI, Tyler, one of the guys here, has just got an A7CR, which has the, the, the AI autofocus. And he's saying what he has learned is that he, he it's learned how he shoots. So like when oh, it I sees an image, when it sees an image, it's like, okay, this is actually where I, what he, you know, he may be looking at well, this photo and it's kind of predicting that. That's cool. I haven't necessarily I, I like that. experienced that because... But is it not, if if this is kind of norm with cameras in the future, yeah. would it not just be part of the shooting experience? You won't think, oh, yeah, exactly. it's thinking for me. It and will just, oh, it just does a picture the way I like it. I mean, the, the other side of it is like, this is like generative learning. Like there's an actual term for it used earlier. Generative, yeah, so generative learning is something that has... Um, for a, a program has been used in camera tech for long it's just this new term ai is to make it yeah. sound fun right because yeah it's, modern it's, it's modern um but yeah i don't know i don't actually know how long we've been talking for but uh, like uh, uh, we've been talking f uh, for 46 minutes 46, with a little break with a little yeah. with a little break a little tea break 40 minutes perfect yeah. um, i've got a question for you okay go now, this is a this is controversial one. You know the hot shoe cover. Yeah. Do you keep them <laughs> or do you remove it from the cameras as soon as you get a camera? Um, I keep them as long as it takes me to put something on top and then I lose it immediately. Um, I like the idea of them. I feel like the concept is really sound, but the actual. Okay, so. Anything that can be losable, I li and when it comes to review gear and stuff like that, I literally put straight back in the box because it's like, yeah, I don't trust yeah, myself in order to, yeah. yeah, you know, I'm gonna lose yeah. something. I do have to say for those people who, for those who are watching and listening, that have seen your A7 A7 S3 and you oh. was in a very bad shape. Oh, uh, luckily, don't have that on anymore. It was in very bad shape. <laughs> it it um, looked like you threw it against the wall a few times. Uh, anything that I get borrowed, just to, if anyone's watching from any other companies, I look after like a baby. <laughs> My own stuff, it's, it, it gets used into oblivion because I use it into oblivion. But... <laughs> I, I have recently upgraded both of my cameras, um, and I, I love it. So I've got an FX3 and an A7C2 now, and I'm trying to be more careful with it. <laughs> I'm the opposite. Uh, I'm, you, you, as I said before, I'm emotionally attached to things, so yeah. I clean the camera when I come back from the shoot, so there's no dust on it. <sighs> okay. And I, ne I never, never lose those. That See? would drive me insane because you can't buy them easily. <laughs> See? You can buy replacements, which are yeah. not the same. I... I I hear, you know, <laughs> it, it makes it sound like I'm not emotionally attached to stuff. But 
the thing is, is like when I when things end up getting scratched for me or like you know things happen to it, I feel like there's more of a story there, you know, and that's probably not the best way to look at it. And I think your way of protecting your gear is more important. No, I think I, I, I'm borderline OCD, and yeah, I do have I do I can just I think it annoys me when I see it and it's not quite right like yeah. the missing hot shoe cover yeah, okay. or, or scratch a scratch will drive me crazy i think i have to sell it and buy another one really yeah it's that i've got my fuji xs20 i was filming something and uh, i moved the i had a ninja 5 on a, on a light stand and i moved that without the glasses on yeah and i couldn't see probably and I, and, I, and i hit the screen with the with the foot of the stand and there is a scratch and uh, every time I use it, I try to block that thought. Don't look at. I just said to myself, "Don't look at the scratch. Don't look at the scratch. <laughs> don't, look. <laughs> don't look at the scratch. It's just. It, it it's not there. Oh, no, man. you can't. I can hardly see it. <laughs> but it's there. No, I it's get, there. I, I I do get what you. I I do get what you mean there. Yeah. <laughs> no. I uh, yeah. I, I I wish I was better with my own stuff. I do. Anything that is. Yeah. It's. It's got to the point where, like, my nickname in work is Furby, okay? So when it comes to my stuff, it's just like, oh, you, you Furbied it straight away, haven't you? I'm like, no, I haven't Furbied it. <laughs> um, and, like, when it becomes a noun, it becomes a problem, right? But anything I get sent, I, I look after, just for safety sake. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, no. Um, so hot shoe cover, no. I, I, anything that I will actively lose, I put back in. And that even comes to uh, the lens hood. Talking I, about the, the hot shoe cover, yeah. Fuji, Fuji apparently, that's what, that's what I've experienced, they got a very bad quality control and they sometimes don't put them in. Don't they? Very, very often, very often apparently. Because that's I bought a camera and it wasn't there. Then I rented one and it wasn't the brand new one. I had a, I had a time. And uh, I have asked them and they said they should be there, but they, they someone didn't put them in. Oh, that's mad. Oh, I, I don't think I've ever experienced uh, not having a lens cover. If Fuji is listening to this, I have had it from someone from Fuji in Poland, so don't quote me. <laughs> they're gonna, it was them who told me this. They're gonna break down. They're gonna break down your door now and see. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I actively don't think I actually have any of my um, hot shoe covers at the moment. But Does yeah. not bother you that it's not because apparently this is again apparently this is what I heard. It's, I don't think it's an official statement yeah. that that piece of plastic makes your camera waterproof because there's electronic contacts in there so they're yeah. not sealed so yeah. if that's tight in there it protects the water yeah. from getting to electronics i've apparently i've i've tested the weather sealing this is the other thing about sony is like they're very crafty with the how they name their um the weather sealing because it's dust and moisture resistance yeah so like it it's can, not waterproof so so for me what that sounds like is it oh it can it stand slight humidity um yeah. and a little bit that's what it like, like to me. yeah yeah, yeah. um but saying that, I have also tested their cameras because I used to do weddings, right? And um, I had this wedding up in Scotland. Uh, it was actually a wedding. It was an engagement shoot up in Scotland. And on this particular shoot day, it was torrential rainforest, kind of like Scottish weather where the rain is going sideways. It's sideways. not going, <laughs> it's not coming down. It's it's coming at you like meteors over the <laughs> over the horizon and that was the only time i have ever experienced my camera having issues working at that time it, it stopped working um it stopped working for about five minutes and then it started wow. working again that's impressive yeah no yeah no i, I, I yeah I, I put my camera through a lot of and, stuff and you had no no cover on top no hot shoe cover i had no hot shoe cover um on top wow um, with the Sony's, when it, that happens, it just tells you, oh, the accessory's not plugged in properly. Because, of course, their hot shoe cover is um, intelligent. So, yeah. 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 No. I had once, I was I was filming with the A7S2 and, uh, and the 24 to 105 yeah. uh, by the sea. And, uh, and, uh, and I, was, I got covered in sea salt, oh. sea salty water spray, like really covered. yeah. yeah. Uh, and camera worked fine, but the lens is I still got it. It's different color now. Oh. The salt kind of uh, changed the plastic on it. The 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 rubber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's gray now, not black. <laughs> I feel like something. Um, kind of talking on kind of what I think brands should do, and I think it might go that way eventually. Hopefully, because Sony already do it with their things, and I think Panasonic already started doing it as well. 
um, and that's actually having an uh, audio interface in the hot shoe. That yeah, is... Sony, I think Sony is... I don't, Panasonic, yeah, Panasonic, because they do have adapter for XLR adapter, so it must be. Yeah, I don't know if it's have, pluggable they, or is it they, they haven't smart. quite... I, I know they've got the XLR input thing on there. Um, they need yeah. to do it for their shotguns, because from my experience, again, this comes from me losing stuff like hot shoe covers. From my experience, having just a mic just to click in to the top where you don't have to worry about cables, yeah. I love it. And it's the same I, I with like the, the XLR input for the FX3 because it's but actually... We're talking screwed. about what's, what should be new with the cameras, what the brands should come come up with. I think the one which a lot of people talk about, and they do that with their bigger cameras, is their internal ND filters. Why on earth are they not doing that yet? Mm. They're doing with the big cameras, like FX, FX6, FX5, I think, had it as well. Yeah. Uh, Canon cameras, the big ones as well, they got it. The, 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 the filming cameras usually got it built in, camcorders. Yeah. You know, and the filming cameras. Why not pull it something like this in the electronic even well, and the inside the uh, hybrid cameras? The thing is with that is for a long time, they like, because everyone says this, right? That this is something I've heard quite a few times. And for a long time, the manufacturer said, oh, we can't put an ND filter in with the internal stabilization unit. So it's like the, the gimbal, right? Ah, uh, okay. And that's been something they've been saying for a really long time. And Sony released the Burano cinema camera, and that is one of the first cameras to have the electronic view, the electronic ND, um, as Definitely. well as the stabilization unit inside of the camera. So I think it's something yeah. that just can't see how they can just back in the picture electronically. Why, yeah. why, why, why is it a problem? You know, it doesn't have to be like a physical filter slotting in there. It just has to be no. electronic software way to darken the picture when it's too bright when you're filming at certain settings. I. Yeah, but that, 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 I feel like that falls into the ballpark of um, what the sensor's like output is, uh, like the minimum gain and stuff like that. Because yeah. um, with certain cameras, you have the ability to cut down on um, ISO where it's um, where it's a fake Sony, yeah. version of it. I mean, like, um, I mean, for example, it comes like, do you do you know what ISO is? Do you know what it means? Yeah. So it's. Um, well, the international standards organization so it's not a way yeah. of measuring light it's nothing it's a literal measurement of like a standard like yeah why iso is such a lie and it's why you're starting to see stuff like uh i feel like i've been mentioning sony quite a bit here but the exposure index in sony um has been mentioned no is coming into effect where you've actually got like you know an accurate way of measuring it but um yeah because of course it used tell to be me something because you, you're using fx 6 6 has it got a shooter angle or is it shooter, shooter um, speed um the fx 6 has had shutter angle and i believe the fx 3 has shutter angle as well i think okay. i set it as that when i first had it but again i might be just reminiscing from my sweet time with the fx 6 um <laughs> But the FX6. Not, I just don't know. I never use FX3 or FX6, so I don't know. But shutter it's kind of strange really... that. Sorry. Why, why did they not put a shutter angle in a A7S3, which is a flagship hybrid, you know, camera of Sony? Um, it's uh, it's now an old camera. Yeah. I, I I don't like that as a way they think about their gear. I really don't. Um, I think they should be still updating the software in it, but yeah. When it comes down to the the actual camera itself, I really think they should still be updating it, which they did do with the recent update, adding a few. Which camera are you talking about? FX FX six or uh, no A seven S three. So with yep. the A nine yep. release, they announced the fact that they're going to be doing an A seven S three update. Okay, that's interesting. Which you know it's great but it's you know it feel like it needs a little bit more love because that camera has been the center of attention equally are they going to be releasing another s um, i don't know um i don't think they need it with I, fx fx3 and fx30 i think they're waiting for because because this is when they whenever they release the s it's a targeted move because a camera in the market has done something a little bit better global shooter on a nine, that's that's the thing which has to come to to the to more video oriented cameras. I don't think it's going to. I think they might do. I think what we might end up seeing is a twelve megapixel global shutter sensor, maybe a twenty four megapixel global shutter sensor, 
But the reason why I don't think they're going to introduce it is, um, have you watched uh, Gerald Undone's video on the A9 III? Um, yeah. I think it literally came out like today or yesterday. The dynamic range performance on it is not necessarily fantastic. Um, yeah. And the base ISO is 2000. And it's been a long time since the base ISO on a Sony like S-Log kind of ratio has been around 2000. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the global shutter. And in my video for the global shutter for the A9 III, I, I talk about it being every camera past this point in the a7 lineup is going to be in the shadow of that camera now is it a yeah. camera that's going to be widely used as the, everybody's main camera i don't think it is no i think specialist tool i think the launch and why they had um retailers in particular go out and check out the a9 um was literally because of the sensor um i believe we haven't actually got that much time left no okay uh it's I, one hour now huh We've been talking one hour now. We've been talking one hour. Okay, final yeah. question. Final question. I feel like I could talk to you forever. You're beautiful, human being, just in general. The final question, though. Somebody starting out doing... Because you've been doing this longer than I think anybody... This is. I'm not looking to make you sound old here, okay? I am just, old. Just to clarify. You've been doing this longer than most of the people that I've actually interviewed on this um, this series. Any mm -hmm. advice that you would give to someone looking to start a creative career and also looking to start a YouTube thing? Because, I mean, that, that advice might be useful for me. I'll repeat myself again with a creative photography video. Don't go, don't, don't have, you don't have to go for the most expensive singing and dancing latest cameras. Save yourself money. I think it's more learning or better to learn if you, if you got inferior gear because you get to understand it than singing and dancing. I know people personally who, who buy the most expensive, the latest, yeah. starting up because they can afford it, yeah. but it doesn't necessarily make you a better photographer or filmmaker. You know, I believe, we talked about it before, getting an old second-hand camera and a vintage lens will will teach you way more about photography and filmmaking than, than the most expensive one. I think yeah. you just have to adapt to what you got and you can make it work, whatever it is. Even your phone, if it has to be. Yeah, yeah I mean, a lot of people... Should, I know we're a camera shop. We shouldn't be talking about phone photography. But I think it's a great way for you to start. Um, and yeah. I think, you know, uh, when you get into doing the cameras, get yourself a used DSLR, a great place to start. Um, and I Absolutely. still think the one that I started on personally when it came to my own camera rather than parents, like a 600D, beautiful camera and i think even to today you can still learn so much from a camera like that uh, it's make make what you got what you have work yeah. because you can they are they all they all can do a brilliant job you don't have to have five thousand pound camera and a mm. two thousand pound lens because they won't make you better photographer no. at all no or filmic uh, youtube coming back to youtube very quickly starting on youtube i'm not an expert i'm i'm struggling with it <laughs> it's not like it's a yeah. It's, I've done it for a long time and, I, and I've been lucky enough you know, to, to see things and try things and, and make it grow, but it's growing slowly. Uh, I like what I do and I, lo I do it for, for the love of gear and the love of photography and filmmaking, not particularly to, you know, to, to go viral. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not expecting that to happen anytime soon, but I just, just with YouTube, when you start doing, if you always want to do YouTube and you want to start, consistency, that's the only advice I can do yeah. because, because it's very easy to... to uh, to be to be put off by the low numbers yeah. when you start yeah. it's but you have to do it for you not for someone else and if you do it for you it's easy i and i and i and i, yeah. and I agree with that saying that from a perspective of someone that's not really doing it for me right now that's doing it for a company i guess but i agree with you i think but it's still the same it's your work yeah, you know yeah, it, yeah. you put your you put your heart into it yeah, and if, yeah, if yeah. 20 people watch it you might still you, you still are going to be affected the person yeah no a yeah, hundred percent um i like i've been putting my heart and soul into this and i i absolutely love it and i think persistence is really key when it comes to anything um and I think, you know, I think what you said there comes across in your channel through and through in every video, um, uh, you, especially like to a certain extent, even your OCD nature. Um, I think 
uh, your videos are very immaculately created, you know, very good with the, the technical um, aspect to it. And I do really enjoy Thank watching you. your stuff, man, and can't wait to see what you do next. It means it. a lot because your stuff is hot. And is it? I feel like I should just pack everything up when I watch um, your stuff. <laughs> I think I think so. I really appreciate <laughs> what you're saying. Thank you. I, I, you know, I think it's one of those ones where, like, yeah, I'm I'm still starting out. The, the stuff that I do is creatively driven, yes. Um, but I uh, have been a, a a creator for people um for a really long time, and doing YouTube was a learning experience for me because it's an entirely different aspect of that. Because uh, the videos I created were short form, high impact content, and that's something which I think comes across in kind of the, what I do. I have very little attention span. I am very yeah. ADHD in my nature. Um, and that kind of way of editing and kind of like viewing content is kind of how I base everything off of. But really awesome chat. We are now uh, almost under a yeah. minute left of the Zoom call. It has oh, yes. genuinely been a pleasure to have you on and I look forward to seeing you at SWPP. I will be vlogging the adventure. So if you want to be a part I, of that, I will, I will be, be there. Awesome. I'll be there. And thank you for having me on this as well. No, you know, I much appreciated for invitation. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent, Matt. No, I, um, you know, it's it's still small, but it's getting bigger. So um, genuinely, thank you for doing this for me, um, for us. Thank um, you. And uh, have a have a good evening. And uh, yeah, really awesome. Thanks, man. This, you, I feel like I, I feel like this has been a beautiful conversation. Um, it was, and it didn't. It doesn't feel like an hour. No, it doesn't. And this is this is my trouble. Is I, uh, I it's got to the point where the boys here are starting to say I have to have a chaperone with the podcast because I just like talking. 